Hey, hey, developers. Today we're going to talk about the top five web development frameworks and libraries that you should learn in 2018. So we're going to focus mostly on front end libraries. And most of the libraries I'm talking about are single page application or client side frameworks. So I'm not going to talk about Lodash or jQuery. There's always a lot of momentum happening with those frameworks or bootstrap. We're not talking about those. We're just going to talk about single page application frameworks as if you're going to create a new application and which ones you guys should look at. Now I will preface this by saying that there's usually two frameworks. I guess one of them is technically a library that everyone brings up. And I just want to say, we're going to discuss those, but those aren't all those aren't the end all and be all of web development frameworks. I think those are the ones that everyone says you must learn. And I'm going to give you a couple of other options in there, but we will definitely talk about those two. And you guys could probably guess what they are. But before we begin, I just want to say Udemy is having an amazing $10.99 sale. There's only four days left. Probably by the time you see this video, even less, three or two days. So definitely get in on that. I put some of my favorite web development courses in the links below. So if you're a brand new web developer, I put a link to some amazing courses like Colt Steele's course below. If you're looking into getting to Vue.js or Angular, I put some amazing course courses links below. And if you click on any of those cor those links and you buy any courses, I get a couple bucks. So that really helps me out. And I'm a proud Udemy affiliate. So check that out. So without further ado, let's talk about this top five web development frameworks. And like I said before, this is just a fun list of my favorite web frameworks and libraries that you should look out for in 2018. And I have worked in some shape or form on all of these frameworks. So I think I will preface that I do know these frameworks. I've worked in all of them, but it is a fun list. So take it for what it's worth and you really, when you pick a front end framework, you really need to look at the pros and cons of it and the jobs in your area. So keep that in mind before you jump into a front end framework. So at number five, I've picked Aurelia. So I'm pretty deeply knowledgeable about this. I actually interviewed the creator of Aurelia last year. I've written a ton of tutorials on it. So it's a modern front end framework for building browser, mobile, and desktop applications. I use this TypeScript. It's very modern. You can easily put ES 2016, 2017 stuff in there. It has pretty good build tools now. Uh, it's being actively developed and maintained. Um, it's really, really close to JavaScript that you're writing. So the framework's in there, but there's a bunch of different modules, a bunch of different stuff. You can kind of piece everything together with all these different modules. Uh, the only bad negative thing I would say, really, I think in 2017 lost a little bit of momentum. I think in 2018, I'm hoping to see it gain even more momentum. I know my publisher, Manning, which by the way, I have a, a new book coming out, the Vue.js in action book, but Manning um, has a, a few books coming out for Aurelia. I know Pact has a bunch of books in Aurelia. So it's it's getting momentum. I think more developers and more, more businesses are looking at this as a, a way to put a in production a single page framework. And I think that's good. So I would keep a close eye on this. And I think in 2018, you want to look at Aurelia. And number four is Ember.js. This is one of my favorite frameworks. It's the tagline is the framework for creating ambitious web applications. So as always, it has a very active, a really amazing community behind it. Uh, they have a really active um, chat rooms, uh, Slack chat rooms. Slack chat room. They also have Amber Comp that happens every year. And um, if you ever need any help with it, there's uh, there's always someone that's willing to help. It's a lot of development still going on it, going on with it. Ember 3.0 is really close to being released. So you could tell that things are moving along nicely. Of course, it always is known for its excellent tooling. It has you can also easily build an Ember.js app because it has this really amazing add-on ecosystem that you can just really kind of plug all these blocks together to make your own Ember.js app. You don't have to rewrite everything from scratch. So it's one of my definitely favorite, uh, favorite frameworks. I wrote a book on it, so you can look at the Ember.js cookbook. It's on Pack Publishing. I, the only reason I put it at number four this year was because um, 
definitely Ember.js is going, I don't know what's going to be exactly in 3.0. I know there's some cool stuff out, but I think it's, it's highly, it's a great framework. I just think these other frameworks are just a little bit more momentum right now, but I would still highly recommend jumping on Ember.js and creating a web app if you, uh, if you need it. At number three is Angular. So here comes a few, a couple of the frameworks you probably have heard of that everybody recommends. The super hero, heroic JavaScript MVW framework. Of course, we have TypeScript. It's, I would say it's the second most popular with the next one I'm gonna mention the most popular. And it's supported by Google. It has kind of has really good tooling as well. It has um, a lot of stuff built in to it. I would say that Angular is is going places. I mean, it's been around for over seven, eight years. They had Ang they had, did have a little bit bump last year, a couple of years ago, where they rewrote the whole framework and they, it's incompatible. So there's Angular one, and then there's Angular two, four, five. Um, so the newer versions of Angular aren't compatible with Angular one. So that I think that was a misstep, but I, I think it, it worked out the best because the framework is much better. So almost when you're talking about Angular, you have to realize there's two different frameworks, but I'm talking mostly about the newer versions. So I would highly recommend uh, for people to take a look at it. It's still going strong. At number two is React, and I, th I would say solidly React is probably the most popular single page or client side framework out there. It's a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. And let me say, this is not a, f uh, a framework, it's a library. But really, once you start adding in all the other dependencies and modules to add in the router and everything, it basically becomes a framework. But if you just wanted it by itself, it is just a library. So it's, um, it's one of the most popular ones. It has pretty much a huge ecosystem. A lot of people love JSX, which is kind of the combination of JavaScript and HTML when you're writing things. And of course, it's supported by Facebook. So React is not going anywhere for many, many years. It's, it's an extraordinarily popular library. And I guess if once you add everything together, you can consider it a framework too. So I would highly recommend to keep an eye out for React in 2018. It's gonna continue to grow and be popular. But really in 2018, I'm most excited about is Vue.js. Uh, it's the progressive JavaScript framework. I have been deeply involved in, in Vue.js for the last six months. I'm writing a book on it, the Vue.js in action. You can find a link below if you guys would like to get the, f the first chapter for free. It's easy to get up and running. It's very performant. It's easily adoptable. You can easily uh, add in the Vue.js library uh, framework into your existing applications. You can also use something called Vue CLI um, as great tooling and create a whole app with your Vue.js. You can easily bring in other dependencies, modules. Uh, it's like many of the other frameworks, it uses components to kind of break up your application. It has a, a great testing utility that's coming out for it. And I keep on hearing more and more about Vue.js. There's so many things happening in this ecosystem right now. I think a lot of people are, are looking at this as kind of an alternative to the React and Angular that everybody loves. Um, it's just a kind of a, a quicker, easier setup way of doing it. It uses templates. It doesn't use JSX, although you could use JSX if you really wanted to. There is a, a library for that. It has something called a render function. You can also render things different ways. And if you're using Vue CLI, you, you get this uh, single file components, which makes it really simple and easy to build your apps. And then there's, you can kind of plug in, plug in your own, um, it has, it has this Vuex, which is kind of like a Redux type store that you can add in. That's really simple and easy to use. So there's a lot happening in the Vue.js ecosystem. It keeps getting bigger and bigger. Next year we'll have a conference, one of the first conferences in the US. So I'm really excited for it. I think you guys should be too. I think it's definitely the number one framework that you should check out in 2018. So what do you guys think? What do you guys think of the all these frameworks? Are you interested in Vue? Are you guys gonna stick with React and Angular? Uh, Ember's still hanging in there. Aurelia, I think is it could, could make a big, big dent this year. Let me know your thoughts and comments below. Thank you. Take care, guys.
And also, don't forget, if you made it all the way to the end here, make sure you check out udemy.com. Make sure you check out the links below in the description so you can get some really cheap courses for 10.99, like 20, 30 hours of courses for like 11 bucks. Great deal. Thanks.